Forgive me, Master, but I'm going to have to go all out this time. Just this once. So in this video, I'm going to show you my plan to get the AWS DevOps Pro certification in two weeks, and we'll see if I can get it. So after getting burnt out about seven months ago on AWS certifications, because that's when I got like six certifications, three associates, and then three specialty certifications, I was really burnt out on it, and I didn't really want to continue at that point. Not that I couldn't continue. I knew I could get some more certifications. I just wasn't really feeling it. And um, well, now it's seven months later, and I'm feeling it. So <laughs> let's go. So I haven't touched any AWS material since those seven months ago, or except for making like a couple videos and... I wouldn't say that's much of a review. It's more of like, you know, this is what I learned before. But um, yeah, I, I made a bunch of videos on AWS, but that, that doesn't really count to reviewing, I don't think, anyways. So after centuries of slumber, my rest ends today, and I'm going to get this uh, AWS DevOps Pro in two weeks. And this is my plan. So for all my other certifications I've taken, I didn't have a plan. I just kind of went into it and studied. But I feel like I need to make a plan here because... First of all, DevOps Pro is one of the hardest certifications, or at least that's what people tell me. And I think it is the hardest because, I mean, it has Pro in the title, right? And so, yeah, I'm going to have to make a, a detailed plan for like a day-to-day -day actions that I want to take and things I'm going to study and how I'm going to try to learn the material. Or maybe not learn because I feel like I know most of the material, but probably more like refresh myself. The first thing I would recommend do to do if you want to do something similar to this maybe for associate exam or maybe for the DevOps Pro certification as well, is to triple smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm because it'll help me a lot. No. But in reality, yeah, I, I would also come up with a plan if I was you, especially for the harder exams because they tend to get cover a lot of different services and you're going to need a plan to study which services for which days. Otherwise, it's just going to be a big mess and it'll take you a lot longer than it should. So another key thing I would try to do if you're trying to go for the DevOps Pro certification is to get at least one associate certification. So whether it be developer associate or maybe a sysops administrator associate or even a solutions architect associate. And I would get one of these because they cover kind of like the core concepts of AWS. And without the core, you can't build the castle, right? You're just building a castle of glass or sand and it's going to get bound to broken, be breaking down, broken down. So I don't think you need all three because like that's what I did. <laughs> that seems like a waste of money because at the end of the day that would be like $150 for the first one and then $75 for the rest. So that would be $300 and I don't know if it's worth it to get all three in the end honestly. So getting to some of the specialty certifications will also help tremendously because they're kind of like built on to this professional one. They're at least the professional ones, at least I think. So I, I would recommend at least a security specialty because Security is very important to AWS, and of course, professionals need security. And then, what other ones beside the uh, specialty, so like um, the security specialty? I would probably recommend the, the data um, analytics one, or it used to be big data, that's what I got. And maybe the networking specialty. But um, as for like the, the database one, that might come in handy as well. I I haven't taken that one either, but I don't think the <laughs> Alexa skill certification would help you that much because by that point, you should probably have an associate certification. And I don't think they're going to ask questions specifically on Alexa on it because that would be weird. So I have videos on how I got all six of my certifications. So in a video for each certification on my channel, if you would like to check them out and give you some key insights on how you can pass those in like quick amount of time. Like recently, I made a video on how to pass a sysops administrator in eight days. So you go ahead and take that, or watch that, if you want to do that, because that's kind of like a prerequisite for this certification. So I also challenge any of you to follow along with my plan and see if you can take the, the exam quicker than I can. Of course, there's not going to be many people in my exact uh, kind of location in trying to take these certifications, because not many people take as many as I do. But I, I challenge you to see if you can get it done within two weeks or less. So one of the first things I'm probably going to do is probably watch an online course on, I guess, the core concepts in the exam. And the really behind this, the reason behind this is I want to, I guess, refresh my memory on what each of the services do. Because a lot of these services I don't work with on a day-to-day -day basis. Because if you do not know, I am a software engineer. And we do work with AWS. But <laughs> like a lot of these services, they're very niche. And oftentimes, you're not going to work with them every day. So there's plenty of free courses out there 
that um, you can take if you don't want to pay for one. But um, I might even make a free course one day in the future once I master the content fully and I feel like I can fully understand the content enough to teach it myself. Um, but if you do want to take a paid course, you could always take a free trial of the whatever course um, website you want to take it from. I'm not going to say any names here because they're not sponsoring me. <laughs> but um, you can get a free trial and just cancel in seven days. Or you can just pay for it if you want to. It's probably like not much mon money to do that. It won't take, I say to take a free trial because it won't take long to finish it, uh, like the course most of the time, um, if you've already finished like the other courses. So you can just focus on this course, DevOps Pro, and then you should be good to go. That rhymed. <laughs> so one of my key studying plans is to take the, I take, take the online course, like I said, and then I'm going to read a lot of the white papers and frequently ask questions for the, um, the FAQs for the, all the services, especially services that I think are key to this DevOps Pro certification, which is going to be a lot of them since it's a very broad certification. So I'm going to base my timings based on the official exam, exam guide. So I'm going to base my ideas on how to take this exam based on this guide. And of course, you should kind of do that for all the certifications. But if they ever do change this course in the future, they probably would like label here CO2, kind of like carbon dioxide. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I, I would first of all read through this and I'm going to, I guess, create a plan based on all of these different um, abilities to have here. So then once I take all the notes on all the FAQs, courses, and white papers, I'm going to go through my notes again, make sure I understand them. If I don't understand them, I'm going to review the services again until I fully understand them enough that I can feel like I can take the exam. So it does recommend to have two years more of experience or whatnot. But I, mean, I don't think you need that, honestly. You don't, you don't need two years. I, I took, like, I think the associates required, like, one year of experience. I took them of, like, six months or something like that. So it's not really needed. Also, like, the, the specialty exams require, like, five years of experience. And I had, like, barely any experience in, like, any of the security or big data, data analytics or net, or not networking. Networking is really hard and burnt me out. But... I didn't have any experience in machine learning at all, and I, I still managed to pass it. So you don't need you don't need a certain amount of time of experience. That's just I just want you to be really hooked on it. So yeah, I, I feel like this exam is going to be very similar to the other ones, like with multiple choice. There's always going to be some unscored content. I mean, it's not really going to affect you anyways. But uh, key thing here, 750. So that's very similar to specialty certifications with. Um, so that's the exact same scoring as specialty, because I remember the associates needed 720 to pass. So that's I'm pretty used to that. And then something about passing here. Uh, anyways, so percent of examination, this is really what my plan is going to be based on. So day one and two, I'm going to do, of course, like take a short course or something. And then I'm going to go through the white papers on SDLC automation because it is 22% of the exam. So I'm going to take two days to do that, because if I have 14 days to pass this exam, I would want to spend at least two days on this, I, I would say. Obviously, I should probably spend a little bit more than, more like three days, but I want to have some time to practice and review at the end as well. So for this, I'm going to need to learn more about CICD, and maybe more of the key details that they're going to ask about, and really learn it on a much better level than the developer associate kind of covered. So day three and four, I'm going to go to the config management and infrastructure as code. So once again, about 20%. So I'm going to spend two days on it again. So what do I need to know for this? I'm going to need to know deployment stuff and all about like infrastructure as code. So I'll really need to understand infrastructure deployment models along with AWS configuration management tools and services. So on a much better level than like the sysops administrator associate, really needed to do. So I really need to like review and kind of enhance my knowledge as well. So day five, I'm going to go through monitoring and logging. So this is 15% of the exam, but I don't, I don't think I want to spend two days on just monitoring and logging. That seems kind of excessive to spend two days on it. I mean, we'll, we'll see how it goes though. But I will need to understand some like CloudWatch stats, CloudTrail, how to audit AWS accounts and stuff like that. 
and of course, event management of an environment. So I'm going to need to understand those thoroughly. So day six, I am going to go through policies and standards automation. So this is only 10%, so I probably might not even spend the whole day on this one, but I plan to get through this one pretty quickly because it's not really worth that much. And there's only like three bullet points here for the domain. But I guess I'll need to look at some standards and to make sure that like AWS accounts are going through those standards and like how to optimize costs and stuff like that and how to implement government strategies for my AWS accounts. All right, so day eight and nine, I'm going to go through my, um, go through the white papers and FAQs on incident and event response. So since this is 18%, I think I should only spend maybe two days on it. Um, and the reason behind that is because there's so much stuff on it and I guess it's a decently high percentage enough for me to spend two days on it. So I'm gonna need to, if an event comes up, I guess the idea behind this is I need to know how to automatically heal that event or maybe like if there's a security flaw, I'm gonna need to know how like to trigger a Lambda function to go ahead and fix that event or something like that. So that's where the implements automated healing kind of comes in. Or maybe like make sure you log the error or send the error through like SNS to like developers to know that something is happening with the AWS account and you need to fix it. So day 10, I'm gonna go through domain six. So I'm gonna read all the white papers and FAQs on, or at least most of them, on high availability, fault tolerance, and disaster recovery. And yeah, I probably could spend two days on it since it's 16%, but I spent one day on, or I, I plan to spend one day on monitoring and logging as well. And I don't wanna to spend too, much, too many days on each of these subjects or I won't be able to get it into the two week plan goal. But this does have a bunch of bullet points and each of these could take a while to understand and fully under, to really understand. And I think the real, the, one of the things about this is to really have high availability between availability, availability zones or maybe across regions as well. Because I think the one thing they want you to understand for this one is that if an availability zone, zone goes down, uh, are you going to have high availability across multiple availability zones? or across multiple regions, because they want to say, oh, both availability zones probably won't go down at the same time, but it, it is safer to go do it across different regions, but it might have like more delay because regions are far apart. And of course, you're going to need to know like cost as well, fault tolerance, like I was just mentioning, disaster recovery strategies. So for example, if your database just fails, um, you're going to need to have that be able to be re recovered with another database. And then I'm going to see which points in our applications are potential points of failure and how I can potentially fix those. So day 11, I'm going to take my first practice exam and I'm going to gauge my studying with this one. And I, I agree that this might be a little bit too late to take the practice exam because at this point, I, I have already have studied most of the content. However, and I only have like two more full days after this one to go back and review before I take the exam. But I believe that it's a good time to take it because I'm gonna understand everything. And if I don't understand everything at this point, then I, I don't think I'll be able to like fully understand everything by the end of the 14 day process. So, but day 12 though, if I, there's some missing pieces I'm not fully understanding, I'm gonna go review those concepts and those services and maybe review some APIs because I feel like they're gonna ask specific API questions like for the AWS APIs. And review the questions from the practice exam that I missed so that I cannot miss them during the real exam. Of course, the practice exams are not gonna be, I guess, the same thing as the real exam on day 14, but I hope it's similar enough that I can at least get the general idea. And then day 13, I'm going to take another practice exam and I'm gonna review it again. And then I will see if I'm ready or not. And by that point, at the, at the end of this day, I'm going to, I guess, schedule the exam because you usually just need to schedule it one day in advance. So if I am ready, I will schedule it and I will know if I am ready to pass this or not because I guess I don't wanna spend money to take an exam if I'm not ready. But we'll see. And then day 14, of course, I'm going to take the pre-exam. 
I'm going to get a good amount of sleep. That's my plan. <laughs> and eat a good breakfast. Like, I remember for my exams, I, t I ate, like, dark chocolate and, like, fruit. And then, like, nuts or something for protein. And it, it worked for most of them. <laughs> so maybe I'll do that. And then once I'm done, if I, um, I guess, it won't tell you if you pass. I don't remember. But I guess I'll, I'll find out if I pass after the day of the exam. Or by the end of the next day or something like that. All right. My plan begins now. So that's the end of this video. So uh, thank you for watching. I will tell you the results in a video in two weeks. It, whether um, I am think I am good enough to take the exam or if I passed it by that time or, or not, maybe I need more studying. So I'll talk to you later and make sure you subscribe for more videos. Peace.